Good evening, this is Zachary from Zachary Sweeps and I'm doing this video tonight at, uh, it is titled five tips for open fires and basically um, been in the in the in the business for nearly 24 years I've, I've learned a lot of stuff over the years and uh, with the videos that I'm doing at the moment I want to share my knowledge and then my experiences and things like that that I've uh, learned over the years of being a chimney sweep and um, I thought it'd be a great video this one I've done one on wood burning stoves and I thought it'd be a great video to do one on open fires because a few people might not realize uh, some of the things that I uh, I would advise you on and um, some people might think that they have different ideas of how they they do things but all these things I'm going to tell you tonight are, are things that I've learned myself uh, through my experiences as being a chimney sweep for nearly 24 years. Um, I've been heat HETAS registered sorry, for 17 years and I've also was trained by NAXT. I've been with other associations and and um, so, um, you know, like I've, I've, I've done thousands of chimneys over the years. Uh, I dread to think how many I've done. And, and the thing about being a chimney sweep is... Um, I always think that if you ever need any, have any problems with any of your appliances or anything like that, uh, the best people to speak to would be chimney sweeps because they're, they're, even though I was a fitter as well, which has helped me immensely to, to have more knowledge than just being a chimney sweep, um, you know, obviously with access into taking baffle plates down and access to chimneys and things like that, is I've learned a lot. Uh, by doing that, obviously, I learned a lot with NAX. Uh, they might, uh, you know, I think they're a fantastic uh, association when it comes to chimney sweeping. Amazing, um, the you know the knowledge that they've got is, is amazing. So basically, tonight's video is about uh, the top five tips of what you should know if you've got an open fire, and uh, some of them might be a little bit obvious, and some of them might, you know you might not know about so i think half and half really and um, the, the the first tip that i would say to you is if you've got an open fire uh, you might have been in the property for a long time so you might already have these sort of things but you might have just moved in and you're thinking well what do i need and the, 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 obviously the first thing i would go out and purchase is a carbon monoxide detector and also a smoke alarm and a fire guard for you for your appliance and so that it would go on the half and also but get one that's the right size for your your, your fireplace opening because obviously you don't want bits spitting over the side over the fire guard and going on a, on a carpet or a wooden floor whatever you've got a good a good thing to do a good tip uh, when you do have an open fire because obviously with a wood burner you shut the doors but um, an open fire is very um, exposed in the room might be to get a, 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 a rug to go over your your, your wooden floor or um, uh, over your carpet. The amount of houses that I do go to where people have like um, got marks in the carpet or marks in the rug that they've got in front of the uh, fireplace. And of course you, you won't be using it in the summer uh, time. So um, you basically a bit, you can take it away and then when you start using your fire again you can you can put it there so um the smoke alarm you know obviously is a must uh, and the carbon monoxide is a must as well because uh, what could happen is you could be using your fire one night it could be really really windy you might have no anti-downdraft cow just a straight chimney pot up there and um and then the fumes could come back into the room and of course smoke will come back into the room and and then obviously you've set their smoke alarm off, which is what you want to happen. If if you if you've just like decided that you just want to burn coal on your open fire, then with your your grate that you would have in there, um, obviously you've got to click, keep that clear underneath. And um, but if you're burning smokeless, like what they're encouraging people to do, you would definitely need a carbon monoxide detector because with carbon monoxide detector detects carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is the biggest uh, killer, really, I would say, when it comes to wood burners and open fires and stuff like that. Probably won't be told that, but it, it is. It's Because it's smokeless, you can't see it. So if, uh, if there's a blockage in your chimney 
or the wind's blowing really hard over your pot and and it's blown the fumes back in um you might be sitting there all, all cozy but with a fire and um all of a sudden you know you'd, you'd be getting few poisoned from the fumes because you can't see them there is telltale signs and stuff like that but if you've got a carbon monoxide detector that's the best thing to have if you're burning smokeless fuel because obviously uh it'll go off but if you get like a like a, a funny taste in your mouth that's also a sign i've been to properties before in the past where um there's been a funny uh i've got a funny taste in my mouth and I remember going to a gentleman's house uh, and um, I was there to sweep his open fire uh, and, and, and realised there was an issue in the kitchen and, um, you know, I didn't charge him and there, he had a nurse there and they, they all thought, thought he was terminally ill. But what it was was um, that the arger in the kitchen was basically blocked and it had never been swept and all the fumes from the arger were coming straight back into the room and, of course, was slowly killing this old guy. So they had, they, and also poisoning the, the the nurse, the day nurse used to come around and look after him. So that they, they weren't aware of this. Um, and and, and, I, and I, I said, look, I want to check this appliance out. I'm not going to charge you, but I think there's something seriously wrong with it. And, and that's how I found out it was blocked. So, and that was all through just getting a, a like a weird taste in my mouth. That was the first sign uh, but obviously, if you're sitting in a room for a long time, you might not get that. So if you burn coal in an open fire or even in a wood burner, always get a carbon monoxide detector. It's so important. And then obviously, if you're just burning wood and you've got a grate, um, you know, get your smoke alarm. That 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 is um, a must. So get both of them. You can get them on, on Amazon or... You, I got my son two carbon monoxide detectors when I fitted his fireplace for him a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, like they were 34 quid, I think, for two in B&Q. Um, so, you, you know, like whatever DIY stores you have, what country you, you're in watching this video, um, I'd really strongly recommend them because, like, for the, for the sake of, like, probably under 100 quid, uh, you, your life's worth more than that. So, like, um, that would be my first tip. Um, and the fire guard obviously because that, that you could go out make a cup of tea or get a beer whatever you're into come back into the room it could be on fire with just one spark coming out so it's really important uh, to have one I'd even you know like um, uh, you know uh, you can buy them they're very easy as well uh, my, my, my second tip as, as well is like um, I get this um, with new customers and but I, uh, uh, I used to get this uh, quite a bit and then uh, but um, when I started my own business uh, I decided that what I wanted to do is I wanted to have videos for people to watch uh, so like um, and the reason being is so that you know that we could we could talk about stuff someone could ring me up like, I, like they do now I think you know with the technology that we have now the internet and and doing uh, uh, things on our phones. I think it's fantastic that we have this uh, way of uh, like communicating. It's like being at someone's house and um, helping them. And they can, if you do videos of things, they can watch them and they can see. So it's great. I've got a, uh, it's, it's about when down drafting. Um, obviously, like wood burners can down draft. Uh, I've done a video on the wood burners, but. This is all about open fires, but also open fires can downdraft. And basically what it is, is like at the moment in England, we've got really bad weather. And um, I'm not sure if, if, if you're in England watching this, then, then you know how bad the weather is at the moment. And, um, and what happens is people say to me, it, it first started, uh, I would say, years ago where people would go like, oh, we've just had the sweep round i.e. me and um and 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 um, we went to light a fire and it wouldn't light and then um uh, and then they would say well when was when was the last time uh you used it and we said well we have but they'd say well, we haven't used it since easter and um you know that um obviously the, these sort of things weren't around when i first started so that's why i do these videos now um but it but basically i knew straight away what it was but obviously I had to go back to the customer's house and um, and the, the, the sad thing was I would have to charge them for going, going out. 
but basically would it be be a cold chimney and the reason why they get cold is because of all the rainwater and uh, basically the temperature and what happens is when a, when a chimney is cold it down drafts and sometimes you can walk into your room and you can smell a really smoky smell in there um, and basically what that is is uh, where the chimney is down drafting some people get damper plates uh made up so they can close them down i think that is i think it's very popular in north america and things like that damper plates but in england um people get them more so for ingle nooks and stuff like that but they don't actually get them for normal standard uh fireplaces which i think would be a good idea but the victorians even had them uh damper plates in in their cast iron fireplaces where you can open and close it uh which obviously uh, stops the downdraft but obviously when you go to light it doesn't help in that situation so i always say to people is like um use plenty of paper first so obviously if, if someone's uh, had the, the their chimney swept in easter and then it's like say october november time i know what the problem is but obviously the birds might have nested or whatever so i've, I've got to go out there but if someone said to me that uh, uh, in the winter time Oh, you swept my chimney a couple of days ago. I'd go, right, well, go on Zachary Sweeps, go check out this video and then and do exactly what he says on this video. And, and, and uh, what I would say to them is like, uh, before you have a fire, like get some newspaper, get like the, the any sort of newspaper, not, not, not uh, colored newspaper, like magazines and stuff like that, just normal paper, like Telegraph, times other stuff like the mail you know things that it's more useful for the fire than actually reading it but uh they um but basically so so, so like just light some paper and they don't screw up too much just light the paper and and let it, let it, let it like roar up into the chimney and do that a couple of times but obviously uh only do this if you've just had your chimney swept in a few days prior because then then when you do this, you'll you'll uh, you'll know there'll be no issues for uh, any tar that's up there that could catch your chimney alight. So I always, if you watch, there's a video I've done. If you watch that, you can see I, 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 um, this woman had a really bad downdraft problem, and um, and and I, I you know I knew straight away how to deal with it, and I lit, I lit loads of paper up there. I did it three or four times. I do it differently to like how I would do a wood burner because you can't pack them pack them out and open fire because they you know there's no front covering so they they will it will fall down so uh how i did it was uh i do it three times put a load of paper in light it let it roar up uh don't be frightened of the roaring and then light it do it again three or four times and then basically after that then the, the chimney will be dry it would have dried out all the the rain the dampness or whatever there's a problem with the fire and then after that then you could start having your fires after that paper kindling and a couple of logs and everything and i guarantee it'll be fine it'll but but it'll work perfectly the other thing is if you have a grate and you're only burning wood don't empty the ash out always leave the ash in um, i've had a lot of people say the opposite uh but the, the, mainly they're people that um have had their own experiences with their own fires but as i said i've swept thousands of chimneys over the years and I, I've, I've not been uh sweet for nearly 24 years and and over the years of things that i've learned uh through doing all these chimneys it's this is this is it's the best way of making your open fire very efficient you will find that when i feed my son's fireplace a couple of weeks ago his fireplace uh he, he's left the ash uh he's got a nice uh, big grate in there he's left the ash in there and now he puts one or two logs on and they last a few hours sometimes you can just have one log on and, and it lasts a few hours so depending on how much heat he wants in the room so like that that's what i would recommend as well a, a, a try if you do, if you're one of these people that i come across uh a, a bit uh, not my regulars but new customers that i get i go um uh, I can see that there's no ash underneath the fireplace and and they turn around and they say to them, well, I turn around and I say to them, how are you getting on with wood? And they say, no, we're going through so much wood. And I'll say, well, what you've got to do is you've got to leave the ash in there. And they go, what, really? And I say, yeah, leave the ash in there. Because in the old days, if you're burning wood, this is, coal's obviously different because it needs air underneath because otherwise it won't burn efficiently. 
But in the old days, a couple of hundred years ago, they didn't, they, they, you know, they didn't have um, grates. Probably about 300 years now, I would have thought, uh, two, 300 years ago, they didn't have grates. They used to build the fires on ash beds. That's what they used to do with the great and the ingle nooks. Uh, they used to have ash beds for the for the for the for the fire to go on, and it's great because uh, it doesn't allow any air to go underneath it. The air goes around the logs. It doesn't need to go underneath it like coal does. Coal needs the air to go underneath it and up, whereas whereas logs it doesn't need it, and um, that's how it works. If you like, as you look at this fire now, you know like most of the flames are going. Uh, underneath certain parts but they're all around it there's not much going underneath it but uh, going underneath the parts that are uh, uh, raised up but not underneath the parts that are not raised up so like that's how they used to burn them so it's really important that you you you, um, you leave the ash in there if you haven't done it and you're unsure about it do it and then see how how little the uh, amount of fuel that you're using in the evening. Everybody I know that I've ever advised them to do it, it's made a big difference uh, to how much wood they go through. And and we all know that uh, the governments and everybody's all trying to scam us at the moment, get as much money as we can uh, for energy and heating our homes. So if you can save a few quid by not burning as much wood, then nothing that's brilliant. You know that that's what it's all about, and that's why. I'm, I'm doing the, the, these videos so um, with the down drafting plenty of paper do it about three times warm up the chimney and then have your normal fires and then obviously leave the ash in the grate and don't worry about it. if it goes through uh, through the grate that's great that's what, what you want it to do you want you want to be able to just skate, uh, get, get a little uh, coal shovel or a shovel ash shovel or whatever you've got and then just scoop it up in the grate not underneath it but in the grate that's what you want to do with it and then that 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 will, they will you'll be amazed how well it works so basically the, the other thing i was going to say to you is that you want to get your chimney swept once a year it's, it's really important that you do this uh, for, for for the first reason is obviously for insurance purposes and 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 the second one is the, the main one is for safety it's really important that you get your chimney swept once a year um if you if you've got um if you've got a cover over the top of it um you could uh, be like a bird guard you can see the brush in the in in the bird guard um i'd recommend that you say it to your chimney sweep you'd like to see it and um so like um it's 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 uh, there's lots of lucky traditions with with chimney sweeps and um and it's lucky to see the brush out the top of the chimney plus the other aspect of it is uh, you get to make a wish as well which is really cool uh but the other the, the, the another reason is obviously then you know that it's been swept right the way through into the cow a lot of the new cows now they have a band that straps around the chimney pot when i first started they were all hooked on there so you had to be really careful not to sort of bang them too much because they used to come off so easy um and um but now they we use strap bands to go around them and you can bang them about a bit clear all the all the soot off the actual bird guard or whatever um uh cow that you've actually got there but that, that that's that's really important to make sure you get it swept every year you you, you you want to get you must get a certificate afterwards after you've had it swept it's really important that you do that um you, you either want them to be a member of an association or that they have public liability for chimney sweeping so and then it should have the certificate should have the policy number and who who does their public liability or it should have the association that they're with um it's very important and that, that you, you have this because um, if any issues happen then you've got something to cover you it might be uh, uh whatever whoever's fault it is you 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 know that either the, the chimney sweeps insurance company will pay out or your insurance company will pay out uh depending on all the circumstances but you really need that that uh, proof because they would just turn around and go well this is this isn't proof you know that you've had it swept professionally by a professional person so it is really important to do that and and the other thing i would say is like if you if you if you have any issues with your your fires i've noticed there's you know like on facebook and also on on, on youtube and stuff like that 
uh you know people a lot of people give out uh, i think more less on, on youtube because there's a lot more professionals on youtube than than there is on like these uh facebook page these group pages and everything everybody's got an opinion everybody like thinks they know what they're talking about and not many of them are actually chimney sweeps or fitters or or anything like that so that they're, they're, they're people that are just sharing their experience with their appliance you could have the, the exact same appliance as the person who lives next door to you and it might work completely different. You'll be the master of your open fire after a while. You'll know it better than anybody. You'll know if there's a problem and then you'll be able to, uh, but you need, well, uh, so, you know, like the guy next door could say something about his uh, and, then, and then I could say, well, that's not how mine works. And it could be simple things like uh, uh, double glazing you know, like um, you've knocked two rooms into one. These, all these little things, more drafts. There's so many things that can that you do in your house that would be different than your neighbor's house that can affect your fire. So always, if you ever have any problems with your fire, um, as I said, you'll probably pick them up after a while anyway because you'll know how they operate better than anybody else. But if you do have any issues, it's always a good idea to, to, to ask the, the chimney sweep really you know like um it, it's it's especially with open fires because the chimney sweep will will know i mean like as i said i've been after i've done it for a long time i've swept thousands of chimneys i've basically like um and being a fitter as well has really helped and um it, it's really important because it's like me taking a like i say a, a rental car to a ford dealership and asking them to sort it all out and know everything about it they ain't gonna know everything about it, and that's 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 with a lot of fitters. They, a lot of fitters, they know they know how to fit wood burners, but they might be they might only fit certain types of wood burners, and then other types. So there's so many different stoves on the market that every now and then I'll, I'll come across one that I've never seen before in my life, and but it doesn't happen that often now. But uh, but the basically I, I know most of them and how they operate. And just like with with open fires and things like that, if you ever have any issues, I mean, I, I see these 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 Facebook pages and they're saying like, you know, uh, what can I do with this, that, and the other, and and it's such a dangerous game to play to take advice off people on Facebook, because they they they're, they're like they 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 if they're not qualified, then they they're basically they're they're telling you information that uh, that works for them, but it might not work for your fireplace, so. It's, it's really important that you just stick with your sweep. Uh, find yourself one that you feel comfortable coming into your home, does a good job on your chimney, and um, and, it, and we'll talk about stuff. If you have any issues, you know, like even if they, they, you think they might, oh, I won't bother him, then, then, then do bother him, you know, because at the end of the day, he'll want to, your custom, he'll want to come to your house every year, and, and he'll want to do, do that work. You know, so he'll want to make sure that your fireplace is safe and secure. So I'd, I'd really stress that once you find the, because like people to take some time to find the chimney sweep that will, that they, you know, feel relaxed and comfortable in their home, feel like they've done a good job, feel like the price that they've charged for the work that they've done is very reasonable, reward loyalty like I do. I don't put my prices up every year. Uh, because I re reward loyalty, I look after my customers, and as I said, if they have any issues, I always say video it and then send it to me on WhatsApp. And nine times out of ten, I can actually f sort it out over the phone watching their video, and and uh, you know, and they can say, oh, they can bring it up or take a photograph of their their stove door. And say, does the does the rope need re uh, replacing? Um, or, or you know, I'm going off to a, a, a wood burner. Sorry, but um, you know, uh, they they could ring, ring me up and say, uh, "Why is this happening? Why is uh, when it, the fire dies down, I'm getting smoke coming back into the room?" And um, or, or, you know, th things like that. I say, take a video of it. It's never done it before, and it could be something like a, a tree outside that's grown a bit taller. And it's, it's affecting the fire. So, uh, you know, a simple thing might be just to raise the grate up a bit. You know, so but if, if you video all this sort of stuff, then 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 then, then send it to your chimney sweep. And he'll be able to, he'll be the one that have the most experience when it comes to the open fires. Um, I, I like to class myself as a master sweep now, to be fair. And um, because I've done so many of them now. 
and um you know like um as i said there's a lot of them i can just sort out over the telephone so you know you know if you get your chimney swept every year always ask the chimney sweep you know don't ask people on facebook and other places like that but them sort of platforms ask the professionals at the end of the day ask the people that deal with these sort of things all the time so they're my tips for for your open fire i hope this helps you out and if you haven't done any, any of these before in the past you're going to be in for a great a, a surprise but hopefully uh, if you've just moved into a property get a smoke alarm carbon monoxide detector and a fire guard before you start having any fires and, and maybe a rug as well would be a good idea and remember coal and wood at the burn differently coal needs air underneath the grate wood doesn't so like if you want to go through wood like there's no tomorrow like a furnace because that's what will happen um, as you can see with this fire how slowly it's burning um, it, it, uh, it's nice and warm and everything but um, you, you, you're not going to be replacing the logs or, or, or you know every sort of half an hour an hour putting another log on you know it's just it's just gonna it's gonna be like this for a good few hours so um if you have any issues always ask your chimney sweep just speak to them get in touch with them leave a message depending on what sort of relationship that you have with but i can imagine the majority of you you people out there will have a, the same chimney sweep that you've used for years and years and he will know your fireplace not as well as you do but he will know it very well and he'll he'll be able to you, you'll know it more because you'll know if it's like riding a, a motorbike I, I find that if there's something wrong you you feel it and i and i think with with open fires it's the same you know if you something not just right what is it and you know just speak to the, your chimney sweep have a chat with him and um, he can get it all sorted out for you i hope this helps uh, i know it's a bit of a long video and uh but I've, i really felt that i needed to sort of do this i'm going to start doing more stuff like this uh, and also like because you know i want i want to have like a, a library of of different videos of so that that people can go on to onto my my uh, my page and and, and and all the information that they ever need to do with fires will be on there so if they ever need any questions answered about their open fires or wood burning stoves or argus or rayburns anything you know any any heating appliance they that they will can go on there and they'll know what uh the videos will be there to show them what to do anyway have a lovely evening uh, from zachary sweeps thank you very much